Hey, 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 everybody. It is I, Host Giselle, and I'm coming at you all tonight to have a conversation that I feel like shouldn't even have to be had. You know, um, if you have been living under a rock somewhere or just, you know, not a part of the community, but you follow me and so you get all of your trans and LGBT tea from me, um, let me go ahead and fill y'all in on a couple of different things, right? Janet Mock, uh, one of the executive producers and director of Pose, which is a show that everybody knows and loves at this point. Um, at the premiere party of Pose, Janet had what had to be and what felt like one of the most kind of sort of empowering and uplifting 15 minute you know, uh, rants, speeches, come to Jesus moments with herself, as well as the rest of the cast and crew of Pose, uh, when she decided that she was just gonna lay everybody's shit bare, including her own, right? Um, a lot of folks feel indifferent about this. A lot of folks have a bunch of different opinions around this. A lot of folks don't know how they feel about this. Uh, but the consensus and what I feel like the consensus should be is that there are a lot of things at play that should be considered that are not being considered. People are overlooking it for the simple fact that she did mention infidelity towards um, her partner, who is also uh, the person that plays Angel on the, uh, not Angel, the Lord Jesus, the person that plays Lil Poppy on the cast, his actual name is Angel, sorry y'all, because I keep forgetting that there's a character named Angel. So not to be confused with India Moore, uh, um, but uh, Angel, who plays Lil Poppy on the show, and Janet are, you know, together. They've been together for about a year and a half or so now, and she admitted to having infidelity on him. And out of the entire 15 minutes, we're going to assume, because nobody has the video yet, yet, I'm waiting on it to drop, because you know TMZ gonna give us all of the tea, Okay, um, and so basically what's going to end up happening is that a lot of people took what I assume to be maybe three minutes of this, maybe an awkward five minutes um, out of the entire 15 minute segment and decided that they were going to spin this into the entirety of the conversation. The reason why I have an issue with this is because everybody cheats, right? Everybody has their own little uh, list of dirty secrets. And especially when you're talking about Hollywood, everybody has something going on that they should not have going on as it pertains to their relationship. Um, but what I don't like is that a group of our own trans amorous men, okay? Now, for those of you all who don't know what that means, y'all ain't never heard the word before. Y'all are like, hope, what the fuck is a trans amorous man? Those are men that claim to love trans women despite beyond, over, and through, right? Our transness and our identities, and they want to do so publicly and openly, and they want to stand with the girls and move with the girls and fight for the girls and all of the things, right? Uh, one of them happens to be my good friend, Mr. Chris Patterson, who runs uh, Men Like Us podcast. Him and two other men decided that they were going to um, not only host the space where they were going to discuss Janet's infidelity, but host the space that they were going to discuss her infidelity in relevance and adjacency to Harvey fucking Weinstein. Now, before I jump into this, I wanted to let y'all know that I could not tackle this one on my own. So I do have a couple of reinforcements, two of my good sisters and a couple more people might pop through to help me unpack all of this. So as we jump into the topic, I want to introduce you all to some of my ladies, Miss Nylee and Miss Anastasia. What's up, girls? How y'all are doing? Let me make sure y'all can be heard far and wide. What is going on? Um, y'all, y'all. I, where do I start? <laughs> I feel, I mean, we could go to the fact that she's not being allowed to just be a human and be flawed and talk about how, like you said, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has the capacity to cheat. So it's not an anomaly. Um, but she's being treated as someone who is not supposed to. She's supposed to be the good Sally Hemings for this company and not talk about what she experiences. She's she's supposed to grin and bear it. And her mistakes, even the ones that she wants to own, they're not letting her do that. And so it's like, but she's entitled to her feelings and she's entitled to come to a place of acceptance with herself, however she feels the need to do that. If that infringes on their comfortability, that's secondary for me. But I just don't like how they're saying that this was a poor timing choice. Um, 
how she should have known better, or basically she should have played ball. And I, I don't like that. I, that's the aspect of it that I think is fucked up. Oh. I think I would be remiss if I, because I, I mean, I understand time and place. So, but I do think that since I'm not, I can't speak on behalf of knowing the full scope because we have not seen the full clip. So based off of what I've seen, I just want to explore that a little bit more. So I'm not going to say that every time, every place garners that type of conversation, but I do understand that injustice cannot be a whisper. But the issue that I have is the focus on the infidelity piece and how that is being stretched out and you missed everything else that was communicated in her delivery. So that's what I want to focus on. And that's what I want to explore more in detail. I think that I, if, if I have to agree with anything, Nelly, I want to definitely agree with that. I think that when we talk about, you know, this, a lot of folks are focusing on this huge piece about how little Poppy was wrong in the situation and, you know, he was hurt and, oh my God, little Poppy. Like, you know, as if men in Hollywood don't fuck 50,000 bitches on their wives and it's not a thing that people go into the industry telling you that you're going to have to accept. And I think that at this point, it's become so colloquial that even people like us who are not a part of the industry know that if you sign up to be a basketball wife, if you sign up to be a rapper's wife, if you sign up to be so-and-so's wife, just know he gonna fuck around, right? But it's gonna be about whether or not you can handle it. And I feel like in this industry as a woman, right, you can't have that same audience. Like they don't wanna offer her that same thing, right? As a powerful woman in Hollywood, Janet can't say, just know that your dick might not be the only dick I want to ride and that be okay, right? Even though men do it all the time. And I think that the thing that's disgusting to me in this is the fact that these men titled their lives, right? You know, Janet Mock, let, let, let me read this verbatim, right? I want to read this verbatim because I, I hate to put words in people's mouths. And so I want to let y'all know exactly what they titled this live because I was more offended by the title, right? And it says, we're talking about cheating ass Janet Mock and her Harvey Weinstein wave. <laughs> that is what they titled their cast, right? And so when we talk about Harvey Weinstein and likening this particular situation to what Harvey was doing, I call bullshit, I call disrespect, I call what the fuck, and I call y'all clearly don't have the range because there's nothing about these two situations that are similar except for the fact that somebody could have gotten somebody fired if they wanted to. But what I want to uh, offer to folks before I let y'all weigh in on this is the fact that the difference between a Harvey Weinstein situation and this Janet situation is that Janet and Angel are in a very open, well-known to everybody relationship. So the power dynamic is only gonna run its course if like Harvey, right, Janet decided to keep these dealings secret and use that power of secrecy to her advantage and tell Poppy, if you don't lick this pussy how I ask you to lick this pussy, you off the show, right? And that and that's the difference. But when I'm in an open relationship with you and everybody on the cast and crew knows, honestly, I do myself a disadvantage because now if I do anything to you, people are gonna assume it's just because you did something at home. And so I don't have the liberty to even really chastise you for not coming into work and doing your best because people are going to assume that we're having a lover's quarrel. So if anything, Janet did a disservice when she decided to make their relationship public and tell people that they were together. And so it, 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 it can't be given Harvey Weinstein when she gave up the ability to have that sort of power from the gate. And I would love to know what you all have to say about that. I also want to welcome to the stage and to the platform, my good sister, my aunt, my my matriarch, and all of the things in society, uh, Miss Mojo. Uh, she's going to be offering her dealings to the stage. And I'm, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you so much, Mojo, for making the time to be with us today. Hey, my babies. Mwah. Hey, Karen. All right, so we were talking about the whole accusation of or the comparison to the Harvey Weinstein thing. I'm gonna let y'all go for what y'all know. You know, popcorn in, jump in and give me your thoughts. 
I don't think that that's a fair comparison, just based, like you said, off the power dynamic, but also the scope. It, the scope. Like, you know what I mean? The scope of Harvey Weinstein's abuse, because that's what it was. It was abuse to the people that that he was inflicting that on is great. Like, multiple people have been saying that not only that, that it was sexual abuse, like sexual misconduct in such a way where it was, I'm going to need for you to do this or your career. We're not talking about the scope of Pose as a show. We're talking about the man that owns a studio that can literally say, you can't work here, but I know the people at the other place. You won't work there either. So that threat level, like if something were to go bad, Poppy could get a job somewhere else. She she may be something in Pose, but that's not going to affect his scope of work outside of that. But then it's the deviance behind it. Like, you know, like she, she can do what... We all, like I said, had the capacity to cheat, even if she was in, um, did um, choose to cheat and step out on him in such a way. It it wasn't devious. There was no maliciousness. There was no. We know what Harvey Weinstein did and what he did to these women. It's it's just not comparable. So is I feel like trying to say, oh, it wasn't this. It's overtly not this. It's it's overtly not this thing because he was a rapist and and a sexual predator. That was his thing. That's not that. That's not this. It can't be this. Not in a committed relationship that she put out for the world to see and continuously expresses her love. It can't be that. It's it's so the dynamic shouldn't even be. At all, period. And I mean, you speak to that again, and it's it's baffling that that was the comparison. So that lets you know one, your intellect, and two, your your grasp of the situation at hand. Because one, we really don't know the the arrangement they have in their relationship. Yes, she came out and said that she was having a, a situation with someone on crew, but we don't know their agreement. We don't know what type of situation they have. We don't know his comfort level and how they worked past it or have they gone through any situation. So it's the double standard of what we allow and give grace to with men and what we don't allow and give grace to as women. So I'll look at that and unpack that. I think, here's the thing. We have to understand the violence of clickbait because if Hope Giselle made a video saying trans amorous men are really dick amorous, mm. it would be an uproar, right? If we're working in a realm of clickbait, but to put a white abuser's name on a black trans woman lets me know, number one, where your heart is and lets me know, number two, where your mind is. Any man I find that is amorous with the black trans community would never in a million years put no bullshit up like that with glee, with glee, with a smile on their face. And I think when we say we don't trust y'all, when we call y'all chasers, when we say that you cannot be in community with us until you do right by us, this is what we mean. Janet Mock came from a place of telling the truth. Something y'all trans amorous men refuse to still do. Y'all don't tell the truth. Y'all tell the parts that serve y'all and serve your community. What that woman did on that stage is called telling the truth. And not only did she share her community's truth, she shared her truth as well. So we could deal with that on that realm, but to compare her to a serial rapist, that was nasty of you. That was nasty. And for that, you have blood on your hands on your platform. I'll say it. When I say 110% agree, but what I also <laughs> want, I want to jump into this clip because this clip right here gags me. Um, and it gags me in particular because you have two Black men, right, who have been in relationships with trans women that have also been Black. You have two black men that are in community with black trans women who allowed a white man to do this right here. Okay. Was on the set of pose running down, trying try to chase that vendor guy, you know, the dude with the coffee. <laughs> the, uh, and, 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 and the fig the <laughs> Oh my God. You look good Oreos. Yo, she was like, I heard dude had chips ahoy today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the plan of peanuts. Oh my god! <laughs> Dude, it, I mean, really, is that all it takes? 
is that all it takes? Yo, all, um, I'm saying, all I'm saying is, what would she do for a Klondike bar? Oh, bro. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Okay, but they all look like Chip Ahoy's, and the last one looked like a Klondike bar. What are we doing? What are we doing? If we were as focused on dentistry, okay, if we was as focused on skincare, okay, maybe y'all can have that conversation. But don't even go there because look, none of y'all would have a piece, a whiff of a Miss Janet mop. So you don't have the range. None of y'all. And to bring a white man to speak on a black woman's name, that's all I need to see. It's, can, can, are we talking? Are we talking? We're talking. Yes, hello? Hello? We're, okay. Is this thing on? Fuck the bullshit. Oh. Fuck the bullshit. What is the proximity of people that we just saw to be at any way in proximity to any women like us? We are successful black trans women. Okay? Let's call a spade a spade. What are the probability ratios of anyone like that being ever able to even just get a phone number or even just get a contact a response to a DM? I mean, I can, I mean, is it zero to, uh, what's the ratio? So when we're talking about issues and then you bring in, come on, let's call a space space, our oppressor, and you're talking on trans issues, we, we got to be honest. Let's be emotionally honest. Let's be emotionally honest with each other. What what do you gain from having this conversation and including this in? What do you gain for having this title as being clickbait? What do you gain from only focusing on that piece of what Janet Mock said as we were talking about the disparities of Black trans women and how we are being treated in Black Hollywood? What did you gain from that as you still also con consider yourself trans amorous? Where is the love piece? Because if you break down the term trans amorous, it means the love of trans women. So where is that love? Where is that compassion? Where is that grace? Help me understand because I'm missing it. It wasn't in that video. It wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't there. No, the math okay. wasn't mapping. Mm -hmm. It wasn't mapping. So they, you can switch it on and switch it off. Is that what right. you're saying? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. It, was, it was. It was hella tone deaf. Um, I that clip was cringy as fuck because it just didn't. I to the aspect of that community and stuff like that and being trans amorous, but like creating a space where it's being detrimental to trans people in that way. It, it it's it's looking like oh, you serving a purpose, but then the purpose comes off as if it could be just sexual because now you're not allowing her to be a person. Like you know, mm -hmm. what I mean? you're not allowing her to be something. You're you're making a mockery of an already oppressed people and doing it with the same ease that you can do a white Harvey Weinstein. But the damage is going to be greater to her than Harvey Weinstein. Even now, even as he sits in jail, he's sitting on multi million dollars in jail. She's not going to be able to do that. Harvey Weinstein logistically could come out of jail and be in the backseat and still run his company because they don't see anything wrong with violating women in Hollywood. We know that to be true. Janet Mock saying what she said, this could be, possibly could be the end of her career if not handled by people who value her correctly. That, and that's, but that's the thing, they don't care. I think that a lot of the reason why these trans amorous men, these trans loving men, like the idea of us not having power, right? Because a large, a large part of their conversation, when I, when I dig back into my notes, a large part of their conversation was about the power dynamic, the power dynamic, the power dynamic, right? And it's just like, does it bother y'all when, when Black trans women aren't escorts? Does it bother y'all when we're not just walkers? Does it bother y'all when we're not just street walkers? Or does it bother y'all when our only jobs don't come from nonprofit work or we're not a social worker or we're not these stereotypical things that make you know just a little bit above the minimum wage? Does it bother y'all? She's shaking the table. Is she shaking the table? Does it bother y'all? Because I feel like that's what it really gets into, and that's why y'all are really mad, is because Janet has the upper hand financially in this particular relationship. And to y'all, money is power, right? Mm -hmm. But what y'all don't understand is that real men, right? And the and, and the men that because let me let me let me really lay this out for y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A lot of y'all complain about the idea that y'all are not in Y'all are not, y'all don't have good women. Good women don't want y'all. We only want trade. We only want so-and-so. That's not true. 
We want men that know how to walk into a space, command that space, not because he's going to come in and tell me what to do, but because he knows who he is and what he wants and how that's going to happen, right, for himself. It's not about how much money he makes. It's about how he commands the space, no matter what coin he's bringing into it, right? I don't mind bringing home more bacon if you're going to make sure that everything in the motherfucking refrigerator is edible. A lot of y'all are letting everything spoil and then expecting me to be okay with cooking it. And I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to feed myself poison. And, and, and I think that so many of y'all are okay with the mediocre because then you don't have to do better, right? But having a person or having a woman like Janet means that you got to step your cookie up. And a lot of y'all are upset at the fact that trans women are no longer, right? Gone are the days where we are backseat hustling, waiting on you to help us out with the extra part of the rent. Y'all are coming into a space where if you're not coming in on your P's and Q's, and that does not mean with more money than me, but if you're not coming in with something to offer mentally, spiritually, physically, then what are we here for? What are we doing? And y'all don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when we, because, okay, so let, I mean, again, are we talking? Are we talking, sisters? Are we talking? Because I feel like we've been conditioned as trans women because men won't date us openly, publicly without the shame and humiliation of doing so, that we have to settle. We've been conditioned to settle. Like we are, we should accept the bare minimum of what's left. And so whenever we get to a position of power, whether, whether it's within our autonomy, our agency, financially, physically, whenever we get to that state of we know who we are and we tell you, oh, I'm not settling for this or no, I call you higher if you need to be with me or I have my table, make sure you bring yours, we can push them together or I have my table, I can feed you, but you can't eat, you got to take yours to go. When we get to that space, it gets to a point where they can't handle that. They're like, oh, but you're trans and they won't date you. They won't date you publicly. So this is all you have. And then here you are cheating. No, 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 sweetheart. Listen, I have the ability to be human. And as we talk about trans women are women, trans men are men. I have the same traumas. I have the same triggers. I have the same abilities to have con considered, con consider infidelity, um, distrust, dishonesty. I have those same things. So let's call the, dis, the, the, um, the double standard out. And then let's also equally call out your feeling as though we are still bottom dwellers for you all and that we settle with whatever is given to us. So let's call both out and let's have that conversation. Because if you feel like there is uh, or you uh, coin, your, coin yourself as a trans amorous person, you should be liberating us and celebrating us. And this is just poor taste. It was tone deaf. And if anything, all you did was tear John and Mock down as a black trans woman. If you understand the disparities of black trans women just in real life, we're not even talking about in Hollywood. We're talking about just day to day. Round away girl, if you want to have that conversation of how you just tore down another black trans woman on your platform and called yourself a trans amorous person, I don't understand that. And I said this to you, Ms. Mojo, I'm trans amorous. I love my sisters. Listen, as I continue to do this work, the X on my back gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm willing to die for mine. And I posed that question to them and I said, are you? And no one answered. It couldn't. It couldn't. Cause they not. They couldn't. Cause they're not. They, they not couldn't. They 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 like I, I, I'm, I'm over, over are the days of me sparing y'all feelings when y'all do things like this, right? Because the girl, like there's, there's so much room, but we have to give y'all the business and remind y'all that just because we're trans does not mean we have to settle for your pimple face, your funky body, your overweightness, you're not being able to climb stairs without being able to do any motherfucking thing else after it for the rest of the day, your lack of motivation, your lack of job, your lack of skill outside of that, your bum ass penis, the fact that some of y'all still only want to see us after dark, even though you're trans amorous, but we 
we'll talk about that later. The fact that some of y'all are still chasers. The fact that some of y'all still don't have the education, but you're out here trying to educate other people to do what you're doing, even though what you're doing ain't right. The fact that some of y'all still don't have girlfriends, but y'all talking about y'all trans amorous, ain't never been in a relationship a day in your motherfucking life, can't keep a relationship to save your motherfucking life, and your hairline is receding past your motherfucking neck. Don't play with the girls. You're you spending thousands you of you dollars to look like we do, to move through the world in peace, to be able to come out here and give y'all something to look at. And y'all are really going to sit here and drag a woman that you don't even know. Which brings me to this clip. Let me, this, this brings me to this clip. I hope I lined it up correctly. If he knew that she was cheating on her. Hold on. Wait, not that one. This one. And, you know, shitting on the rioters and, you know, talk, talking about bringing up pay and all that stuff. Like, doing all of that publicly and, like, really just unleashing in a way that's detrimental to your career and seems mentally unstable. Um, it reflect it reflects badly on the community in general when you, you do that kind of stuff. When you're the first, when you're that main one, you gotta act right, and that's the burden that, that you take when you're the first one like that. Jackie Robinson, one, you gotta act right. Sorry, Barack Obama. Not act right, not act right. Not only talking about act right, you're the first trans amorous man with a podcast and you ain't got no act right. Not you calling out somebody else on act. Here's my thing, right? Because it's 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 respectability politics at its worst. Um, you want people to be respectable when sharing their truth, and that's not how respectability politics works, or respectability at, at all, right? Um my main concern now is it's a comfort level. It's the comfort level. How have we made it so that you all feel so comfortable speaking on our names like that? Now I'm reflecting on me, my position, and letting you feel comfortable enough to open your your your, your pie coolers and speak on another woman's, let alone a black trans woman position, something that you clearly want to be where you want to be at. Um, and just authority and agency over her own. Like, how dare you? So when we say I cannot begin to have a trans amorous conversation without trans people, this is what we mean. Because you don't have the range and you don't have the agency or the license to speak on our community. How are you telling us that it makes the community look bad? We didn't tell you that. We didn't tell you that. There's many of us who probably disagreed with some parts of how she did it, but it never came out of public statement. Hey, y'all, the trans community said we don't like that. No, but you can't find it. You can't find out disdain towards that Caitlyn Jenner. You'll find that. But we speak on Janet Marks because we know what that is. I know every lady on this panel is in a position of power in some form. We know what that is to sit on that truth, to keep it in your throat. But the good sister Janet got up there and she shared her truth. So anything you say after that is irrelevant. She didn't go and smack your mother upside her head for giving birth to you when she should have aborted. She didn't do that. She <laughs> went on the premiere stage, a part of a project she had an instrumental part in, and she shared her truth there. It's not the same conversation. And you know, y'all know, I'm a mental health advocate. Mm -hmm correlation to she's mentally unstable and the, to to diagnose her you do not have capacity range licensing any type of background to say that she was mentally unstable i have a, a really hard time digesting that I, I i don't play i don't i don't take mental health lightly and mm -hmm. It pertains to us as black women, as black people, and as black trans people. I don't like the correlation to any type of expression of our emotions, any type of expression of who we are, and is now associated to mental instability or um, mental disability. I, I hate that correlation because we allow everyone else to have the range of their emotions and everyone else to have any 
episode of them expressing their truth and it's still accessible. But when it becomes mm -hmm. a black person, specifically a black trans woman, I take it very personally, not because it triggers me, but I actually work in hospitals where I, I see it. I see where people are demonizing other people and othering them because mm -hmm. the othering people, the oppressed has become the oppressor. And that's what I want to call out as well. So now you don't have the range or capacity to say on a public sense that Janet Mock's response was her mental instability. I, I, I have to call that out. And I want to see receipts of where you have that license to be able to diagnose her publicly. I would like to see it. You're muted, Hope. No, I was just saying, I, I see Anastasia over there. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> because it's, it's telling her to tap dance and to keep tap dancing. Like, that was my issue. It's like, if you want to do this, you got to get with that. And it's just like, don't tell someone to bow down to like white supremacy. Like, that's not what we're doing, is it? Like, we're not telling her to, to keep doing it. Like, I, that's the part that's, that's really hard for me is to say, well, you know white supremacy set all this up, so if you want to um, play in this field, you have to uphold white supremacy. That goes right against the Black trans woman existence, so how do you expect her to do that when in white supremacy every day is trying to kill her? No matter who she is, no matter where we sit, Janet Mock, anybody else on Pose, Laverne Cox, they all want us to just die off. And so the fact that you're saying that we still have to play the game, but the game is killing us. Like she sat up there on the stage and said that it was killing her. If you see any quote unquote mental instability, no, she's under emotional duress where she is exhausted. Miss Mamas is exhausted by what's going on. And she took that moment to share that with you guys. She is just expressing it and to say that, oh, you can't be a human. You can't have access to all these emotions. You can't express it this way. You have to be able to tap dance. You have to keep the good dance going. You have to make the white people smile. You can't let the white people be uncomfortable. They have to keep seeing you doing this. No, like that's not right. We're not gonna sit here and keep performing in a system that is designed to kill us. And then when we name that, you're saying, oh, but you're gonna get what's coming to you because you didn't play the game. That's not fair. That's not even remotely. That's coonish to even say that as a black person, that's coonish. And you're asking her to be a coon. And it's just, she held her part in her coonery and no one else is doing that though. Cause if we're gonna talk about that, talk about how she held herself accountable for that. If you listen to the entirety of it, she held herself accountable for the parts that she played in the machine, in the coonery, in, in the everything. She apologized to people for that. And she also apologized to people that didn't directly know that that's what was going on. And so I find it just hard to swallow that you're saying she should have kept dancing. Don't keep asking Black trans women to suffer to make people comfortable. No. Oh. Now that I want to say, do not keep asking black trans women to suffer to make people comfortable. Because I'm that's, tweeting that. that's our existence. It's the constant suffering. It's the constant like, what about me? What about my life? What about my family? What about my brother? What about my mama? What about what my job don't think? What about? And it's just like, I'm so sick and tired of the black trans woman. First of all, let me let, let's drop the trans for a second. I'm sick and tired of the black woman's job, right? Period being to understand the trauma that everyone else is experiencing at the risk of our own health, mental status. Come on, Tia, stop this, yes. Our children sometimes. Like, I mean, it, 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 it's crazy the expectation that people put on Black women to save the entire fucking world and hold everybody else's secrets for the sake of them to get ahead and the promise that they're going to pick us up in return, right? Because I mean, if we really wanna go there, a lot of these trans amorous men, if y'all had y'all way, y'all would be fucking four or five of the girls that were on this cast <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> and four out of the five would be post-op. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. I mean, and so it, it, it gives very much so. Don't keep asking 
for us to suffer and don't keep asking for us to squeeze and eat and eat and eat on all of this pain and this trauma and then telling us like my thing that was the thing for me too Nani. It, it was the audacity that you have the nerve and the goal to diagnose this lady with a mental breakdown mm -hmm. like you a therapist mm -hmm. like you got an msw like you deal with this on a regular everyday basis and, it, and it's one of those things where I'm just like, where are your credentials? Who 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 out here gave you the degree? Put the receipt on the table and then I'll shut my fat ass up. But until then, I'm going to be talking because I don't see them. And the fact that you have the, the, the nerve to sit from your place on high, using your personal experiences with women to beat down on this woman that you admittedly, at the beginning of their podcast, they all three of them said, I don't know much about Janet Mock. I don't know who she is. They were more equipped to have a conversation about Laverne Cox than they were about Janet. But for some reason, y'all sat for an hour and five minutes and discussed this lady and who she was, called her every name under the sun. For an hour and about five minutes, y'all rolled y'all motherfucking tires and realigned the gift shears on this lady because she admitted to infidelity on a nigga that none of y'all know. Mm. So then they were triggered. Oh, you better call it out. You better call it out, Anastasia. Gosh. Hello, hello. So, and then you centered yourself in her situation, felt Woo! your trigger, and now you're demeaning everything she's going. Now she's not a person anymore. She's no longer okay, a person. She's something to pick apart. She's she's an objectification of of now. This is what's going on. Like you know, I can no, I, I can't grant her her personhood because her experience has bumped up against my trauma. So now what we have to do, now what we have to do is bash her down. for our catharsis, and that's mm -hmm. not cool. Not for a black trans woman. It's not cool. People. It's too much power in where other people sit to put your mouth on situations where it could be the end of someone. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. And it's, it's giving incel vibes. Honestly, it's giving incel vibes. Because y'all were waiting on, y'all was waiting to punch this ticket. Um, it's definitely giving incel vibes. And I think it's something to be said about men who are preying on your downfall to have something to say. Whether you're trans or not, it is something to be said about those kind of men. And fuck it, I'll say it. They ain't shit. They ain't, they ain't shit. <laughs> they ain't shit. In a moment where you should have been more upset that she was being paid that low rate as an executive producer um, on that show, you were more upset that she previously cheated on a boyfriend? Make it make sense. I'm Where's the actual injustice? What's the actual injustice? Because look at it this way. And she's the creme de la creme of our community. And she's still being lowballed. What does that say about the people you may be in love with when they get to a position of power? What do you... It's, it's the priorities for me. It's the, it's the incel ability to say, well, since she won't give us a lay, let's talk about her this way. Ooh. Let's throw in mental health. Let's throw in anything to tear her down. Because we know we don't have the, the ability to even sniff Whatever, whatever's under her skirt, right? So let's tear her down so we can feel like she's on our level. But guess what, bitch? She still ain't. She still ain't. So now what? Because my thing is for y'all to sit, for all three of y'all to sit back and be like, I don't know her, right? Playing a Mar uh, Mariah Carey. I bet all three of y'all follow her. Yo. Yo. I, all, I haven't checked, but I am 98.3% sure that all three of y'all follow her. I will bet my bottom lashes that they all sent her a DM. Because hey, to, to, to know Laverne hey, Cox, to know Laverne Cox and to not know who Janet Mock is don't even make sense. That shit don't even add up, right? Yeah. And so the idea that y'all are literally going to sit here and talk about how y'all don't know her, aren't really familiar with her for the sake of being able to have a conversation about infidelity and then literally say we're not going to talk about the rest of that stuff because mm -hmm. you don't have the range hun 
You can't talk about the rest of that stuff because you don't have the range. You don't have the range to talk about the trauma that it takes to be a black trans woman and work in this industry because y'all don't really give a fuck about it. Because y'all no. have never had real conversations with trans women that don't involve the idea of how it's, and, and assume y'all are going to have sex with us. Y'all don't have the range to have those conversations because the only conversations that y'all want to have are about how we don't focus enough on your trauma as men when the trauma that you all have is self-inflicted because you give too much of a fuck about what other people think about you. I don't care to have a two hour long conversation about the fact that your mama and them might excommunicate you for fucking with me. You a grown ass man that pay your own bills. So I don't care. But what I do care about is the fact that if I don't go to this job and pass, I can't eat, sir. I can't eat. And so, no, I don't want to hear about the fact that you and your brother fell out when he found out that you were having sex with me. Because if I don't go to my landlord and look like a full-blown fish out of water, I can be evicted. So, no, I do not care about the fact that your homie, since you were five years old, stopped talking to you because he caught you at my house. Because if I don't go down here and vote properly, I don't have health care. <laughs> so I'm sorry I don't have time to sit with you and whine and cry about who's not going to talk to you after they discover your attraction for me. I don't have the energy for it. And I'm sorry that you feel like it's a chore to listen to the disparities of the women that you claim that you love and want to protect. I'm sorry. But if that's what you're trying to get into, then you need to get into my issue. Not just my guts, mm. not just the language, but get into my oppression, get into my suffering, get into the reason why I got an attitude as a black trans woman. Because it's not only because, oh, I don't like niggas. It's because every single day that I wake up, I gotta armor my motherfucking self to do basic human shit, like go to the post office. Mm -hmm. It's performative, and I and, and this is this is a, a, a extreme case of you capitalizing on this to give, you know, delivery to your 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 podcast is extremely performative because what, again, what did you gain from this? You say you love trans women, but then you t you're tearing one down, and you're talking on issues on that you don't have any capacity or proximity to. You did not invite trans women on stage. You did not consult with black trans women. You didn't say, well, what do you think about this? You didn't include us in on the conversation and you had it without us. So again, to anyone that's listening, because I'm all about calling in, I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you in. When you're talking on trans issues, you have to include trans people. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it won't work. It can't work. And it comes off performative if it's misinformation. It also comes off performative when you don't practice what you preach. And being someone that you consider trans amorous, where is the love of where was that where was that displayed how can i see that how can i feel that how can i know if i am a trans amorous person up and coming and i'm in college and i'm, I'm learning and taking this the tips to become a trans amorous man what did i learn from this from you if you were setting that example i didn't find it i'm, I'm not, not a fuck thing not a fucking joking. thing but the problem is, and the thing that really kills me with a lot of them is that they don't mind feeding each other misinformation and, and being mm -hmm. okay with it. Never. They don't mind feeding each other misinformation. They don't mind giving out relationship <clears throat> advice without girlfriends. They don't mind giving out marriage advice without ever being married. They don't mind being the people that are okay with saying that I'm leading these men to a better place when you're still in the place fucked up mentally. You're depressed every other fucking day. Every other woman that you've tried to talk to won't give you the time of day because you always got this extra baggage that you're bringing with you into every situation. And it's just like, they don't mind it. The fact of the matter is, y'all can say what y'all want to say about the girls. We may cuss each other the fuck out, but we're always going to check each other. And it mm -hmm. don't matter how close you are with that girl. I could be hope just all I want to be. Let me say the wrong thing, and the girls are coming for my neck. And the, and, and the sad part about it is that y'all don't come for each other's neck the way that y'all should. Y'all are out. My thing is, why are other men not out here critiquing this video right now? Why, why is there not a trans amorous male conversation right now that's saying y'all were dead wrong for that? Because trans amory is a part-time job for these niggas. You turn it off and on. It's a part-time job for these niggas. And this is why I wish 
erectile dysfunction on all of them because for me speaking y'all answered the question to your own video oh we don't know much about jen and mark then shut the fuck up shut the fuck up but you isn't that know. pulling a ryan murphy like if you're going to capitalize off her pain and then say that she has to jigaboo for it you just pulled a ryan murphy in real time hello hello may your dicks never get hard again <laughs> I'll say it. I'll say it. May your semen never ejaculate to its highest power. I wish all of that on you because what y'all do adds to our deaths and y'all don't even see it. And even if it doesn't add to our, our direct death, it adds to our detriment and that's enough harm done. How dare you? How dare you? You know, other people who may be watching that video may call you the F word. I'm not going to do that. I'm not that low. But what I will say is there's a special pay, place in trans amorous hell for men who feel, for men who feel that they can speak, men who have their mouth on our names and their mouth on our genitals. It's a special place in hell for y'all. So get out of my DMs, get out of their DMs, okay? Take that message back that you sent to Janet Mock because you know you did. You're a chaser. You chase a lot. Because about the ways in which you need to unpack your trauma and revisit the word amorous. What Nia Lee described is amory, it's a love, it's a willing to die for, protect, and defend and help nurture. None of y'all exhibit those traits, so I don't respect it. So you can tell whoever the head honcho, the head um condom buster in charge, Miss Mojo has had enough. Keep your mouths off of trans women names. Period. As dude, he probably really shouldn't have been fucking with her in the first place. But I get it. He got a part on the hit show. Were they together before the show started? Was uh, did this no, happened on set? What what was this? Not, no, I think they got together on set. They were okay. Yeah, they well then, fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, how are you yeah. having a conversation about a relationship in defense of a man, and you don't even know when they started dating? dating. Where, how, who? First of all, that could have been y'all. That could have been the worst moment for y'all if that was her husband and you had no idea because y'all did. Y'all clearly did no research. And y'all don't even know if they're back together or not. Y'all nobody know fucking knows. Y'all know nothing about the situation. And then to sit up there and to center this man and his pain of being cheated on. In the midst of Janet telling you that for the last seven years of running this motherfucking show, that she's been underpaid, overqualified, overworked, used, had her motherfucking talents used to bring people in, and other people have taken credit for it. And we've all been there, trans amorous men included. Y'all have all been in a space where you've done some shit and somebody else that's taking credit for it. Where you've done some shit that was worth 50000 and a motherfucker mm -hmm. offered you twenty and you had to take it because you had no other coin. Mm -hmm. Right? We've all been in a space where we've gotten got. And we've also all been in a space where a motherfucker just didn't see our value and was like, nah, I'm going to do this over here even though I love you, boo. We've all been in that space. We're and still we've in that motherfucking space. space. What you mean? Talk about it, Mojo. We're still there. We're still there. If it wasn't on my phone, I would bring up the text messages. We're still there. Hmm. Go on Clubhouse. We're still there. Period. This, this is our real lives. This is our real lives. It is, uh, again, erectile dysfunction, impotence, whatever you need. You got it. Yours. I I really don't, I, I feel like in, in my mind, I'm like, what do y'all want from us, right? Mm -hmm. what, what do you all want? Because I feel like at this she point- She me. <laughs> she miss. She sick. Because that's the only thing that we Two can Two tits and a dick. I hate to say it, but Mo, like, even though Mojo is being funny right now, it's a, it's serious. Y'all no, being dead ass no, I know you're being dead serious, but yeah. even though it makes you laugh, that's the only thing that men can have a conversation about and know every answer to it. When we mm -hmm. talk to them about fucking us, 
they know every answer to every question that we ask that is brought up. But when we talk to them about protecting us, I don't know how to do that. I mean, well, what do y'all want us to do? And then every solution we throw at them, there's a, an excuse for why it can't be done. But oh, like they told us on Clubhouse, oh, we can't do that today, maybe tomorrow. Right, right. It ain't moving fast enough. The math ain't math right. Because when we, tell, when we give you the solutions, here's some things that you can do. And again, that's just us extending grace yet again. It's us saying, okay, I can be patient yet again. It is us being vulnerable. And in, in the midst of our vulnerability, we're giving you solutions within our vulnerability saying, this is how I can help you be a black man again. again. And so you can do, we, when we say, this is how you can shut down transphobia. This is how you can have a conversation with your mom. This is how you can have a conversation with your dad. This is how we can approach children and families. This is how we can have a codependent relationship. We give you all of that. And right now, I'm not ready. You still fail. Mm. Oh, that just. Sorry, y'all. Big city problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, 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 it's just, I'm sick and tired of giving y'all the cheat sheet, turning around and doing the test for you, and then realizing that you went behind me and erased the right answers and still failed. <laughs> like, like, I feel like, that's what we're doing. I feel like that's what we're doing at this point. And then for y'all to literally sit y'all ass up there and make this video. And, 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 and really champion this idea. I, idea uh, that Janet ain't shit, that looks are better, he was a good man, da 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 Like, I mean, out of all of the things that this woman laid out for 15 minutes, and y'all trans amorous, super sailor, trans ass motherfucking module, right? Y'all pick out the one thing that you can do to vilify this lady. Out of all of the things that she spoke of in 15 minutes, y'all pick out the one place where y'all could center yourself and center mm -hmm. your pain as trans amorous men in a space where first and foremost, let's be very fucking clear. Lil Poppy don't give a fuck about none of y'all. Hello. Oh, hello. Man. Hello. Hello. In every language possible. Hello. He don't give a fuck about so, like, none Even to speak about the part where they were talking about alleged like mental health, I tell people, Black trans lives, black women's, trans women's lives are traumatic every day because there is an aspect every day that we have to bump up across, come across, experience every day where it's trauma. So now a black trans woman is speaking on her trauma and you're rebutting it. But we get this every day. But if you love us, why rebut our experiences and tell us that mm, you don't have access to that? You shouldn't be doing this. Like, you're denying us the human right to be simply who we are, and you're saying, but in order, you have to do this. I just, that's the part that I'm just- Because they don't love us. That's it. They don't love us. <laughs> and that's my final answer. When we, and when we talk about the disparities of trans women and when we say like, this is how you can show up for us, if it doesn't center men in any way, shape or form, they don't know how to. If it's not them in the forefront or them being able to say, well, what about me? We don't exist and it doesn't matter. And I, we can take it and give the cheat codes all day long. We can say, these are some things that you can do that is still uplifting us as trans women. And I can, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've seen a cis man show up for us effectively. One hand. One. I can't. I cannot. I'm sorry. They don't want us. Do you care to share your work? Because I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, when we, when, if we've been honest, they don't want us. Mm -hmm. And if I can be a little crass, they want our dicks mm. and they want our media attention. Mm. That's, why trans, mm -hmm. that's why this trans Amory thing became a thing. That's why niggas started making videos. That's why all of this stuff came about because they saw what we were getting. And just like the white gays, they was like, oh, let me jump on this. The girls is getting paid for being just trans so I can get paid for just loving them. And now they're realizing that that's not how that works because we're still the headlines. Hello. 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 You're, you're, the, you're the opener. 
But wait, but wait can I, speaking of headlines, but that's, that's where the something? resentment starts being bred. Wait, I want to say something about headlines because something in my spirit, in my spirit, your spirit, your spirit tells me that Janet said what she said about the infidelity because someone was willing to pull that ticket after this interview came out. Something in my spirit is telling me, and she had to take control of the narrative. Because I put it this way, if she would have gave that speech about the um, pay disparity and all of those things, come Monday, it would have been a fair from Janet Fox da, 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 mm -hmm. on pole mm -hmm. with a whole four-page spread. Mm -hmm. I feel that in my spirit. So part of me feels like even when we're sharing our truth, we still have to take control of the narrative because we just can't even do that. Right, because that would have been such an easy card to pull. As now the show is over, no one is truly con contextually tied to the show. Right, um, we have to minimize the the truth in order to keep that system running. That definitely could have happened to Janet Mott, but y'all don't have the relevancy or the intelligence to even dig deep and think why that woman would share that truth. No one was paying her. That wasn't an episode of Jerry Springer. No one was paying her to share that. But y'all don't even have that emotional intelligence to even dig deep and understand the things that we as trans women actually go through. So even if this wasn't enough to shake her career up, that definitely would have been. Trans women, we, also, we always have to plan ahead. We don't have the privilege of living in the future. We don't have that privilege. Or the present. for us is a plan ahead. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and and to that point, because we don't have the privilege of living in today, we always have to think about our next step. What's our next move? It's always a game of chess that we have to learn quickly. So when we talk about how that is maneuvered, I had a question. I wanted to know, like, what got her to that point, right? What got her to feel as though she needed to say that at that time? I have questions. I'm not going to say that. What got her to the point where she needed to, to, to give her truth in that way, I have questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do I chastise her for doing it? No, because I'm going to always uplift a black trans woman. You said what you had to say. Like when we talk about injustice, it has to be a loud cry. It cannot be a whisper. If us to be able to move forward on the radical change, it has to be done in a way where it shakes the table. Um, you know, we talked about this with Blossom and, you know, she made me think. You know, I don't think that this may be the end of her career. This may be just the beginning because of course. it's... You know, someone's going to be like, oh, you know what? This person didn't treat you right. I'm going to go ahead and do it one better. Or, you know what? Let's capitalize on this and let's take it up a notch. Or, you know what? She is now in a position of power now that she's created and then she could do things and take it up a notch. So, to, to again, the focus of, on her infidelity is so inhumane when men are praised. Do you hear me? Praised to, for doing the exact same thing praised if not it's it's almost like you have to accept this like what you didn't know that like what do you mean like why are you acting like your feelings are hurt and the women are expected to take them fools back black women especially keep that Period. same energy Talk not nearly a ti not nearly a jt went on any public stage and say hey i cheated on my partner and they Come won't on. Come on, Please. I mean, like, I mean, let's be real. Offset and Cardi B, even with this Sweetie and Quavo bullshit, we're always expected to get over it. When he says that he's sorry, you should be done being mad. Because quietness is kept. That's the reason why people really mad at Sierra and Russell. Because Come on, hello? <laughs> oh. He was supposed to go back as many times as, as, as Future was willing to apologize. Sierra was supposed to do what Cardi is doing. As many times as it took Future to get it together, Sierra was supposed to say, yep, yep. That's my baby daddy. That's my baby. Mm -hmm. That's my king. And the second that I'm a black woman out. says, ah, ah, you're a problem. Mm -hmm. And so is your relationship. And you're not loyal. You're not his ride or die. Like, right. Like, in order for black women to be seen as valid, we have to suffer. How much suffering can you pain endure? Is our worth. And then that will be the validity of you being able to exist in this world. I'm going to give you poison and I want you to birth miracles. And that's what they keep telling us. And as black trans women, it gets so concentrated, the amount of poison that we get, but we're still expected to birth miracles from it. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Like... Look, they're not allowing Janet Mock to be a person. You, you're, you're so hung up on this infidelity, and I, 
I don't understand how it's this. From her suffering, you got this. And she she can't be a human? And our constructs shape us to not only be strong Black women, okay? And all that that comes with being a strong Black woman. We also have to be strong Black trans women. And that's mm -hmm. That's compound trauma, compound stigmas, compound strength that we are forced to uh, submerge ourselves in. And then when we do that and take liberty in it and create agency for it, we're demonized for doing so. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. where we, where are, is this who we are? Is, is this who we are now? Who is this who we represent? Because she said something so poignant. She said, I'm on the stage speaking truth to power. That's what Pose is, is it not? <laughs> Clear but the room. My thing is, you wouldn't know about that, Ryan Murphy, because this has never been your truth. No. Mm. Or Stephen Canales. And it reflected in those first two episodes that were written by cis men. Because that's a whole nother conversation that mm -hmm. I'm not going to even entertain right now, but Mojo, just know I see you. I see you back. Because. I have to address this one because what I'm saying, what what some of the men keep saying is, it was the public humiliation, not the cheating. Let me let me explain something to you. Bullshit. You know what's humiliating? When you go out on a date with a man and he spends all night looking over his shoulder, your shoulder, and everybody else's shoulder after he says that he's comfortable being seen with you. You know what's humiliating? Oh Dating God. a man for a year and some change and realizing that don't nobody know you exist. Do you know what's humiliating? Thinking that you're doing him a favor by showing up at his job with lunch and realizing that he don't never work there, ain't ever worked there a day in his life and nobody knows exactly who the fuck this man is. Do you know what's humiliating? It's thinking that your boyfriend's name is John and literally the entire time that y'all been talking, his real name is David. That is humiliating. And not even having your phone number saved in the phone. Ooh. And you get what I'm saying? And never being able to have proximity to the cookouts or the family reunions or the birthdays or being able to do trips or, po or, or post pictures to show that I'm with you or, or you with me in the, in the least bit. And, and to, be, to have to take on, well, don't do your hair like that. Are you going to do your makeup? Or what about this? Or how, what, is that what you're wearing? And then we're supposed to take that and not and, and not conflate that to our gender dysphoria. No, don't do that. Don't 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 reference my dead name. Oh my God, did you just do that? And I'm supposed to just just take that in. And then when you talk about like how I'm supposed to show up and how I'm supposed to hyper feminize my look for your comfort, we can't do that. No. So what let's 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 talk about what's embarrassing to to us now have to build enough self esteem for me and you. Mm, my God. And that's the ticket. That's it. I have to be one man enough for me and you. For yeah. me and you. Mm -hmm. Because when, 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 when the boys walk by, you're going to be ready to retreat. And so I have to stand our ground. And then be okay with not addressing it because if I ever tell you that I didn't feel protected, you throw up in my face that the fact that you were there should be protection enough. <laughs> oh. I should be honored that I have a king in my life the way I do. That you I know, have to king. protect. <laughs> Child, come on. I, I, I think that this accepting the bare minimum and, and the breadcrumbs from y'all is something that y'all, like, like Mojo said, the part that we play and making y'all comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. And so a large part of this conversation is also acknowledging that it's going to be our duty to make y'all motherfuckers uncomfortable. 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 So I ain't going to see because of y'all. Y'all not going to get no pity because of me. I ain't going to y'all. Y'all not going to get no love because of me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done letting you sleep peacefully in my shit. <laughs> As I watch over both of us uncomfortably, can't move, rigidly, not really happy, getting mediocre dick because I'm afraid to tell you that your shit ain't hitting right. I, I, Never was. Y'all come with all of these insecurities and you dump them on trans women because y'all know that we can take it. And I'm sick and tired of enforcing, like Mojo said, 
that place where we are accepting the fact that we're going to take it. I'm not doing mm -hmm. it anymore. Because the reason y'all made that video was because y'all feel like we can take it. Mm. So we gonna read them for filth and yeah, they gonna be mad, but they can take it. Because mm -hmm. y'all men, y'all black men, y'all can handle this. And the white, don't forget they had a white. Oh, the the white, the, 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 the no, Caucasian. We are, we are. Mm -hmm. because a lot of them deep down, they Ooh. say the things, they say the things, they see the things. But girl, a lot of them deep down don't want women. A lot of them deep down just don't know how to lay down with a man. She left the room. Now you're looking for a layover in Transville. Okay. <laughs> girl. Oh my God, I hate you. Not a layover in Transville. Because okay, so and, and again, are we talking? Because you know, people always ask me, "Hey, Nile, do you see yourself with a white man?" And I always answer honestly, and I say yes. And the reason why is because the the amount of trauma that is placed on black people, black men aren't ready. Oh, did you come back with your glasses, bitch? Black men aren't ready to unpack their fragile, hegemonic masculinity they're not ready to talk about that they're not ready to face it they're not ready to call a thing a thing they're not ready to go through this together because i'm one of those girls i'm willing to go through this with you i'm willing i'm you know i, I i'm someone that i can unpack this with you but i need you to be able to do the work yourself as well i'm not going to be in this i'm not going to take the emotional burden upon myself as well but let's have the conversation okay well how do you make this feel how do you feel about dating me honestly let's have a honest conversation about how do you feel dating a trans woman and how society will now deem you gay because they still view us as men no matter me being pre-op no matter me being post-op no matter how pretty i am no matter the amount of success the amount of surgeries the amount of accolades the society still views me as a man how did that how does that make you feel and what are you going to do to unpack that feeling we can have that conversation. I, I'm, I, it's gonna be the. It's gonna be the, the. The every. It's gonna be every other race. Every other race. I, I, where are we? So y'all. It comes to letting go of white supremacy, and they found ways to maneuver in white supremacy that it works for them, and they don't want to let that go. They don't want to let go of the privilege of how they've been able to maneuver within white supremacy. Oh, this aspect works for me, which is respectability politics. And now they're like, but now I need to figure out how this dynamic is going to work with this relationship and how I'm going to not even integrate, but how I'm going to shadow you into my life because that's all I can give you. And you should be okay with that. Right. Because I'm not of me, nobody's going to give you anything else. Right, because you're performing and that's, and, womanhood. And that's, that's what they want to say. Because you're performing womanhood. So it's not exactly authentic. exactly. It's not authentic. You're performing it. Yeah. They it's look not at us, real. You're the, and so you're therefore the I don't have to be real. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's not real. You're not real. And so therefore I don't have to be real. I don't have to I don't I can wash my balls once a week with you. I can get a haircut once every other month. I don't have to, and I shouldn't have to spend real coin on you because you're not a real woman. And the second that you think that you are, and the second that you think that you're worthy of certain types of treatment, I'm going to remind you just what I really think. And you're going to accept it because if not me, then who? Your trade? <laughs> well, they'll kill you, and then that'll just be. And then the narrative will be, oh, because we tricked them. But I don't, my thing, I don't even want to get into the, that, that specific conversation. I'm talking about the, the good guys. Mm. Oh, the alleged good guys. The <laughs> alleged good guys. Oh. I said it out loud one time in a video, and so I am automatically a good guy. Why do you hate me so much? Why don't I get immediate access, fast pass to the pussy? Because I said it out loud. Your trade ain't gonna say it out loud. But I, I hate, hate you so me. much because good guys don't have good dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming to this episode of Can We Talk featuring Hope Giselle. All of my girls are here. 
I really just want to thank y'all for enjoying this conversation with us. I really, I do. I, I really want to, I just, I want to thank y'all for that. Thank y'all. Good. Mojo, why would you do this? Why would you? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm weeping. I'm oh, weeping. No. Wait, where did she go? I don't know. I don't know. Is this, 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 Look at my face. Oh my God, I get to see y'all in real time. I know. Jay Mojo said, hi, Anastasia, girl. I wish I could come see. Oh, but see, we're still live. Oh, see, no. Yep. We'll, we'll see you later, girl. Okay. <laughs> y'all oh, look wait. good. I just, I, I like to pause if I'm doing something else. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I know we were still live. Um, but yes, I want to pause right there and I do want to bring uh, the girls back. I want to have a part two of this conversation because I think that it's dynamic, but I also don't like to have super long conversation. I think that we tackled a lot of information. I think that a lot of the men who are going to hear this and the, the group chat conversation that they swear that they don't have, but they're going to have, I want right. that to light up for the next couple of days. I want them to sit on it and I want us to revisit this conversation maybe even as soon as next week uh, to really get into the parts about why trans amorous men are so jealous of trade, right? I think that that's a conversation that needs to be had as well. Um, and I know that I, right, but I, right, I know, right, okay. So gather your notes, get your things together and we'll regroup because I think that that's where this conversation was getting ready to go. That's where this conversation is. That's your nose, Mojo. Let me keep that. Um, but, you know, we wanted to come and have this conversation. And I thank you to everybody that is listening. Please share it. Please, you know, because these men need to understand from the horse's mouths how we feel about, one, the degradation of our sister, and then, two, the degradation of us as trans women per these men that are coming out and claiming to love us. Y'all think that we don't respect you all because y'all have openly come out and said it and that we are not appreciative of that, but we don't respect y'all because y'all think that that, you coming out and saying the things that you say make you exempt from accountability, and it doesn't. And so I think that a lot of y'all need to sit back and ask yourselves, are you really in this for the love of trans women or are you in this for the ease that you think it should afford you? Because those are two different things. To All right? So thank y'all so much for tuning into this episode of Can We Talk with Hope Giselle. Until next time, I will see y'all later. Peace, love, and hope. Bye, everybody. And I recommend Fenty Skin for all of that. Clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> talk about trans women.